Welcome to J44 Parts Review Part 3. This video will cover the exhaust nozzle housing, which is this component, and that carries the rear bearing and uh, exhausts the gases, hot gases out of the back of the engine. The other part we'll be covering will be the uh, combustion chamber assembly. There's actually an inner liner and then a combustion chamber. The inner liner covers the uh, drive coupling shaft or turbine drive shaft and shields it from the directly from the heat at the same time allows a passage for cooling air to go through and to cool the back side of the or I guess the front side of the turbine wheel. Um, so we're going to cover those two uh, items in some detail and we'll go from there. Thanks. Hope you enjoy. What we have here is uh, an exploded view of the exhaust nozzle assembly, which includes the turbine bear or rear bearing and uh, the exhaust nozzle itself and everything related. So we're going to look at that in real life here, okay? And we'll get to proper terms. So we can always refer to this book. All right. This is uh, the original. I guess if I get it all in here, this is the original. J44 R24 uh, exhaust nozzle housing. This is actually a bare housing at the moment. Uh, I've had it glass beaded so it cleaned up a lot. It's uh, It was pretty rusty or you know tarnished. It's going to darken again so this is more, more or less cosmetic for the moment. Alright well let me set the camera down and we will uh, reposition it so we can look uh, take a better look inside. Maybe we can connect this with a previous um, time when we were taking a look at the rear bearing assembly and uh, the little uh, housing that it, that it rests in. Well, we'll now see where that all goes and some of those uh, hollow passages that we were talking about. Alright, this is uh, viewing the exhaust nozzle housing assembly. This is actually just the housing. Okay, it's still an assembly. Many things are uh, welded together to form what you're looking at. But okay, let's zoom in here and or get close. Uh, basically, this outer flange connects to the outer cowling of the engine. So that is the very outermost containment of airflow. And then here is a, uh, a, a little flange so this is an inner liner piece. This is the harder steel. This little flange is a place for a gasket, a seal actually it's called. It's really um, like a stainless steel braid and then a little V-shaped piece of stainless steel, very thin. And it's, um, but it makes a ring and it's pressed in here and when you assemble this. Uh, then we have our four struts. This engine is sitting um, exactly as it would be if it were in a normal operating position horizontally. It's uh, down here is 6 o'clock, this is 12 o'clock, top of the engine here. And you can see the four sh struts here. These are what hold this uh, bearing housing and tail cone assembly. I don't know if you'd call that a tail cone, but it's this piece here that kind of looks like a cone. This inner part, this housing here. And of course here's the, from the rear view we see these struts. Now these struts are hollow and if you look right through here, that's the See, we can see daylight through there, right? That's clear through and out the other side of the engine. And the same thing occurs, uh, actually, it doesn't occur on the top and bottom ones because, if you'll notice, this passage is straight through. If you'll see, this is the passage from the top strut and the passage from the bottom strut are cut, or well, they're capped off here. There's a Thin piece of metal welded across there. So that's interesting, but it creates uh, airflow patterns that are for cooling. Those uh, lines that we were showing you too come through here, uh, through this passage from over here on this side of the engine, and that gets your air, your cooling air, and your oil mist into that cavity. Uh, right here is where that block attaches, and it, the other, its mate attaches here with a bolt through both in a gasket and then we got a little short line set jogs up here and it catches these two bulkhead fittings and then on this side of the bulkhead fittings we'll uh, we go with 
steel lines, stainless steel lines, up to the oil oil mist distributor and the compressor case air bleed point, which gives you the little air it does to to cool the bearing. Um, okay, so that kind of shows you the. This is a very important component. Obviously, this holds the back end of the engine, and so it holds the rear bearing, and it also directs the uh, exhaust gases out after they leave the turbine they exit through the engine here and if you'll notice what is what, what is this that looks like a restriction I bet you that would create thrust wouldn't it is that all we get I well maybe not look here there's a flange I bet there's a piece that I can bolt on here and it is even further restrictive and that is the actual uh, jet pipe or the final nozzle uh, it's out in the shed at the moment. It's kind of storage, so I can't show it to you. It, 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 I think it's in one of the early, probably the second or third disassembly video where the engines stood up. We actually start taking things off the exhaust end. That is one of the first things, probably the second thing you remove because the outside is the air reductor. Now that attaches here on this flange and it is what creates the draft of air that's drawn through these struts because uh, you'll notice this is welded this is closed off okay so this area here where my hand is is sealed off toward the front of the engine and the outside cone that goes over the jet pipe creates a thin small gap annular gap all the way around and those exhaust gases leaving create a draft if you want to just put it simply that draft that's created pulls air through these four struts. So the airflow would be from in here through the struts to out here and then out the back and mixed with the exhaust gases. Alrighty, after looking at the uh, service manual for this engine, uh, military manual, uh, we, well it suffice to say that Inside of this housing, the, the, this is there's a gasket in the bearing carrier cast housing that the bearing outer race is pressed into fits here. So the back side of this area here has a circulation of cooling air through it to, keep, to help cool the back side of the bearing. At, at the same time, as we mentioned, the two lines two lines come through here: one cooling air only and one on. Uh, one is cooling air only and the other is an oil mist which is air and, and atomized oil droplets very fine droplets like a, a mist just like it sounds those are isolated from this they come through plumbing into this housing they spray into and through the bearing and then that airflow from those two sources exhaust out around the turbine wheel stub shaft so that keeps a pressure, a positive pressure on the bearing chamber, uh, not allowing hot gases to flow in, but it, rather it's, it's a slight flow outward, okay? So what we got there is the bleed air of the compressor is sufficient to overpower the air trying to get in, hot gases trying to enter. Here we have an exploded view of the main stator assembly, as it's called by this manual, which is basically that outer cowling we had referred to then the combustion chamber and you will notice also it has the diffuser assembly in there and then we got the fuel ring the fuel nozzle ring or manifold and the fuel nozzles uh, it actually shows the combustion chamber inner liner and it actually shows the turbine nozzle so here's the turbine nozzle here's the combustion chamber inner liner there's the combustion chamber there's the fuel manifold ring and nozzles. This is the diffuser assembly. This is at the outer cowling. This is what you will what you see when you're looking at this engine assembled. Like when you see, saw it running early videos. You were looking at this outer part here. Everything else here is internal. This is the oil mist generator lubricator. I guess they call it actually it's a lubricator. But uh, this is what takes oil and uh, which is just regular jet engine turbine engine oil this oil is uh, aerated and, and into a, a light mist and blown through tubing to the front and rear bearings.
All right, the next major component we're going to look at uh, is this combustion chamber. Uh, we have there the combustion chamber, that's obviously the large part, and the uh, smaller part on the left there is combustion chamber inner housing. So basically that is what covers the shaft. Okay, well I'm going to turn these around, let's we'll take a look here. But this, this flange here attaches to the diffuser housing. So this would be the front end of this housing. This would be the back end near the, uh, right before the turbine nozzle. <clears throat> so this is the end right before the turbine nozzle. As you can see, it's got some baffling and uh, there's a view that you would see looking at the end of the engine. The uh, turbine flange is somewhere in this area because like I said, this is all right before the nozzle and, and these, uh, these baffles kind of direct the gas to gases to go up and not be trying to lick down here behind or anywhere else they they need to be kept in the straight path through the nozzle through the turbine blades all right so there this attaches on the inside like I said at the front there's a flange and that that is bolted to the um, to the diffuser housing now let's uh, stop here for a second and we will take a look at the actual combustion chamber Now we're going to take a look at the uh, actual combustion chamber itself. This is uh, looking at the front of the chamber, like looking from the front of the engine towards the rear. It, you can see the 12 uh, holes for the fuel nozzles. That's where the, uh, like when you saw the disassembly, the manifold ring encompasses this circle and uh, each nozzle points at an angle into these holes. And you can see that not very much air. There's actually what there are. You can see that not a lot of air is allowed in right up here at the front of this chamber. Uh, there is a little stainless steel washer that goes along with each nozzle, and that helps block airflow. So there's just a little bit of air leaking around there, uh, around between that ring and this housing or chamber. Uh, a little bit of air is allowed in here, and then you got this little. Let's look through there. You can probably see, if you look right through there, you can see the red behind that's the engine hoist. Looking through this little gaps there, all, there's a little ripple of allows air to bleed through there. And then we have larger and larger holes until we get back here. Look how big these holes are. So I'm assuming as we get away from where the flame originates, they want more and more air to enter the path. Up here it's relatively quiet. You would think that the fire would blow out, but I guess I see now how they kind of give a quiet, so to speak, relatively quiet area for the fire to stay going. Same thing on the outside. As you get, the holes are smaller and they get bigger as you get further away from this end here. And here we got some large holes of that air in. And again, we got some of this corrugation here, this uh, dimpling, and you can see, well, trust me, you, you can't see through it because this is tapered down here, but and then of course our inner combustion chamber inner liner would be inside this and on the outside of that tubular shaft where which drives the turbine. Alright, so there's an overall of this combustion chamber. Again, this has been glass beaded and you can see how it cleaned up. This particular piece I actually came from again uh, one of my parts engines. It was in relatively better condition than the one removed from this engine. So this is a donor engine uh, combustion chamber that's been glass beaded and cleaned up to look almost like a new one. Imagine what that looked like when it was at the factory, the engine being built. We need to find just a whole room full of those kind of parts for this, but you know, that's probably not going to happen. I do want to see one other thing, so stand by. I'll stop the camera. We're going to reposition re this uh, combustion chamber. Go we'll compare the inside of this to the video that you saw uh, if, you, if you watched one of the earlier disassembly videos after I removed the turbine nozzle and for the first time looked down at my engine with a flashlight. 
And if you remember, it was very carboned up. Well, like I said, this is not the same piece, so I'm not jumping the gun there, but uh, this one had some, but it was much cleaner to start with. And I think it, it had a lot of less discoloration of the metal. And I'm thinking, as hot as that engine's been again, we'll just go with something in better condition overall. This is the same engine that provided the new, or the replacement turbine nozzle and turbine wheel. Well, that concludes parts review, part three. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, coming up in part four, uh, we'll take a look at the replacement turbine nozzle and turbine wheel, or rotor assembly. Uh, and they've been cleaned up so they look really pretty. And if time permits, at, within the same part, we'll try to take a look at the new compressor intake housing. And that really is pretty too. So, thanks again for watching and stay tuned for future videos.